Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk to you about my new router or router if you happen to be from across the pond. Let's not get into that again. Anyway, here's the one that I've chosen. I went for a firewall mini PC based on the Alder Lake i3 N305 8 core CPU and I sourced this particular one from a Chinese website directly called CWWK who I believe are also the manufacturer of this particular device. It comes in this very solid metal chassis with cooling fins built in. It's a passive device. On this side, it has a power button. It has a CMOS clear button and a bunch of USB ports, and also a couple of um, case intrusions if you want to install Wi-Fi, which I don't. And on this side, which is the business end as far as I'm concerned, you've got a few more USBs, an HDMI port, a display port, four LAN ports, and the power input. Yeah, very solid and metal on all sides. Just have to work out how to get inside because I've got a couple of extra items to install. It's relatively small form factor will sit nicely on the desk and hopefully silently and predictably comes with a warranty book, a power supply and nicely provided with a UK plug, which is handy, a standard sort of kettle lead, um, a power supply and one of the key attributes I was looking for in this device was it that it would be a low power device. It's obviously going to be running 24-7 in my home and I want it to be as economic to run as possible. Let's check out the power supply and see what it says on there. 12 volts, 5 amps. Well I certainly hope it consumes a lot less than 60 watts but we'll check that out and we'll take some measurements later in the test. And this looks like a fairly standard 12 volt male power adapter that will go into the back of the case. Um, this, it turns out, is a little screwdriver. Not quite sure why they provided that, but um, that's very nice. I'll think about using that later. It also comes with this cable adapter for an internal SSD. You can see, obviously, the power and data connections at this end. and the other end, you've got a power cable that connects to the motherboard and the data cable. And I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Let's talk briefly about why I selected this particular device. Um, I wanted something powerful, and this has got a quite a powerful 8-core processor, silent, with 2.5 gig network, 4 LAN ports, could run OPN Sense or PF Sense with low power and relatively cheap to buy. But all I need to do now in order to get this thing up and running is to install this crucial RAM and this NVMe SSD that I bought separately into the device. And we'll use the provided screwdriver. I could have bought the device with SSD and RAM installed, but instead I prefer to buy my own RAM um, independently, just so that I've got the verification of knowing that it's branded and good quality. Oh dear, looks like my screwdriver fell apart. Okay, so I'm gonna take these screws out, install the SSD in the memory, and we'll jump ahead to when I've got that done, and I'll show you what it looks like. There we go, a single SO DIMM slot and an SSD installed, very straightforward, so we're just gonna put the cover back online. And then let's have a look at powering this thing up and seeing what happens. So I've decided to install OPN Sense on this. I'm switching from PF Sense to ODS OPN Sense. Um, we can go into that in another video if we want to. Um, but essentially, let's run through the process and what the plan is quickly. And I'll show you how that goes. I'm not expecting too many problems because this device has basically been designed and tested, I think, to run on PF Sense or OPN Sense, or at least according to what I've read. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a USB stick in one of the USB ports with the um, installable version of P OPN Sense on. Then we're going to plug the power in. I'll probably hook up a monitor from the HDMI lead. And um, that will be the first time I've ever powered on this device and we'll see what happens. I just need to set things up slightly differently so I thought I'd demonstrate how it's all plugged in before I do that. I'm not going to run this device with an, a monitor and an HDMI lead plugged into it, but by using one today, we'll be able to see exactly what's going on during the install. So that's where that will be plugged in. Okay, let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are set up on the desk. Um, I've installed a power monitor just next to the device so that you can see what power it's using. Watch it boot up for the very first time. I haven't been into the BIOS or anything. This is literally the first time I've ever switched this thing on and I did so with the USB stick in containing OPN Sense. So let's see what happens. 
Right, well I've obviously sped things up a little bit just while it installed, but not a tremendous amount actually. It was probably about 10 or 15 minutes, and here we are booting into OPN Sense without any problems at all. That was an absolutely seamless and very straightforward install. So no question, this is not something that you need to be a technical wizard. A disappointing amount of nerdiness required to get a successful install, but nonetheless um, really successful. Right, I've got some configuring to do now, which I'll probably do in the web UI. I saw the power peak briefly at uh, about 20 watts. Um, it's currently hovering around the 14 to 15 watts with um, a keyboard and a mouse plugged in. Hoping it'll settle down a bit later to um, a better or lower lower figure. Of, um, I'm, I'm hoping for between 10 and 12 watts, to be honest with you. I'm just configuring some LAN settings and I'm going to get it up on the LAN and we'll log into the web UI and see what it looks like. I did go through the whole process quite quickly. I'm not aiming to make a how-to video and if you do have questions you can always post them in the comments below. I like to keep my videos to less than 10 minutes and the aim here was to show you the device and how well it works and how easy or relatively easy it was to install things. Right, I think you've seen enough of my desk now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this up to the network, power it on, and we'll start looking at the web UI. Have a look and see um, what it looks like in OPN Sense. And then at the end of the video, I'll show you it in operation. And I'll obviously talk to you about what I think the pros and cons of this device are, and a little bit of feedback on the installation of OPN Sense and how it functions. When you log into the web UI for the first time, there's a helpful wizard to get you started on configuring your network. The only thing that I really had to do um, specific to this device was to tell the OPN Sense software about the thermal sensors on my Intel CPU and once I'd done that um, you've got a really good overview of your thermals. Particularly for a passive device it's obviously important to make sure that it's properly cooled and that doesn't look like it's going to be a problem for me with temperatures pretty much in the 40s at their highest. Admittedly, this router doesn't run under much load in my current configuration. When I upgrade the speed of my connection in the near future, I'm expecting there to be a little bit more demand, and that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do the upgrade in the first place, is because I'm expecting a fiber network connection to be coming to my premises fairly soon. So I'll conclude the video with a few findings and conclusions. And then a little chat about who I think this device is for. Um, from a findings point of view, I was really pleased with the install. The unit is silent. It operates at about 12 watts or less, typically in my application. It was a very easy install of OPN Sense that went very straightforwardly. Um, and I'm really pleased about the fact that I've got a bit more future proof. I needed a more powerful device for my future faster connection. I wanted something that was low power that wasn't going to be expensive to operate full time, so the 12 watts works well for me. And I wanted to future proof as well in terms of having 12.5 gigabyte network capability, which this device does have, but I don't yet use. Who is this for? Well, if you're looking for a much more powerful router, you want to be running OPN Sense, PF Sense, or an open source router software. You want the faster network speeds for the future. You're not concerned about Wi-Fi support. This device obviously doesn't have Wi-Fi built in. And I'm not, not sure I'd recommend you build... It could be added, but I'm not sure I'd recommend that. You're better off with separate Wi-Fi provision in your network. You need a basic understanding. So the people that are going to be using this need a basic understanding of how to install RAM and SSD and how to configure a router in OPN Sense and PF Sense. But it's worth pointing out that it was very straightforward. There is a wizard built into the device, and there is an absolute plethora of help and technical advice for people online for both of those software um, solutions, router um, operating system solutions. Um, the device itself, the total cost, including the peripheral, um, sorry, the uh, SSD and memory that I bought, was about 300 UK pounds, which is about $400, delivered to me direct the device from China, which went very smoothly. So it's not a cheap device. By the same virtue, though, I think that's broadly competitive with um, other consumer devices that are currently able to provide the same kind of capability. 
and I would argue that this is a far more powerful and capable device technically than anything similar that you can buy for that kind of money. Although I'd stand corrected if I'm wrong about that, you know, put something in the comments if you think there's a better all-round off-the-shelf solution that can do what this does. Finally, it's silent, so it sits now quietly in the corner of my office and hopefully like my last self-build router will be unseen, unheard and won't bother me for another six years. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.